Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Matrix Tutorials. I promise next week you're going to get juicy demos to break the monotony. Last week we deployed Mjolnir. Now it's time to learn how to use it to enforce moderation. Note that everything that follows also applies to Dropnir, at least at the time of recording this video. Dropnir is a fork of Mjolnir. You can really consider Mjolnir as your security guard. You need to deploy it in every room you want to protect, but you also need to allow it to take action against offenders. That means changing its power level so it can remove people temporarily, also known as kick, or definitely, also known as ban. It also needs to be able to update the ACLs of the rooms to ban entire home servers from it. If we have a look at it in practice, um, we can get back to the three rooms we had created last time, like the books, random and general rooms. If we explore the room members, I can see that, that I have moderation, the user for Mjolnir that is uh, in this room, and it is admin. So it can look a little excessive to give it admin uh, privileges when I just want it to be able to kick and ban people. And actually, I don't need to do that. But it's the ACLs part that can be a bit more tricky. If we go to the room settings, we can go to the roles and permissions. And if we scroll down a little, we can see that there is a setting called change server ACLs. And this is the one that is a bit tricky because by default, it's something that only the administrator can do. So somebody with a power level 100. What we need to do, if we don't want to give the only power level 100 in every single room, we need to go to every single room and change that setting to something custom, like for example, 99. This allows us to say, Mjolnir is sort of the technical administrator and I am the only one with power level 100, so I'm the owner of the room. It's a bit complicated and to be honest, if you are the only person who has access to the um, access token of, of Mjolnir, you don't really need to take care about that. Just make sure that nobody other than you has access to uh, the access token of Mjolnir because it means they would be power level 100 and they would be in a position to give that power level 100 to somebody else, which can be an issue. So Mjolnir also implements a basic reputation management system. It supports deny lists and subscribing to them. The name is pretty explicit. Deny list is a list of people who are denied access to the rooms your Mjolnir protects. For example, as the manager of the books community, I can set up and publish several lists with different motives. I can set up a code of conduct infringements list that bans everyone who is disrespectful towards book lovers and a spam list for, well, spam. It can sound useless at first, but it becomes useful when you make those lists public. The manager of the warm drinks community can subscribe to my spam list, but not to my code of conduct list. As a tea or coffee lover, they don't really care about people who don't like books, but they do care about spam. They can subscribe to my spam list and I can subscribe to theirs. This is a very basic way, but very efficient way of implementing reputation. You can define common standards with other communities regarding what is acceptable or not, for example, spam, but you don't have to agree on everything. For example, coffee lovers will not care that someone doesn't like books. So how does it look like in practice? Let's go to the control room of Mjolnir. I can type, so the, the most useful command is Mjolnir help. Basically Mjolnir is going to tell me what it can do and how I can tell it to do something. The first thing I'm going to need to do is to create a list. So the command for that is Mjolnir, where is it? List create shortcode alias local part. So what is a shortcode? A shortcode is a small identifier that you are going to type when adding someone to a block list. You're going to type it often, so keep it really short. For example, if you create a list for the code of conduct, you can use COC. And for the local parts, matrix rooms have one or several addresses. An address has the following format, hash, local part, so local part, colon, your home server domain. In my case, it would be hash local part colon chipchop.org. You can only add addresses with the domain of the home server you live in. For example, my home server is chipchop.org, so I can only create addresses with the format hash my super room colon chipchop.org. But why are we mentioning rooms? You probably already have guessed that our deny lists are just matrix rooms. We will see it in practice in a minute. 
So putting all that knowledge together, we can create a list for people infringing a code of conduct, assuming we have one. I'm going to just type a comment that Mjolnir tells me I need to type. So Mjolnir list create for the short code, I'm going to use COC. And for the local path, COC, uh, for the local path is going to be code of conduct. So Mjolnir has created a list and we can see that room. I can try to join the room and it has nothing inside it. Actually, it has things inside it, but we just can't see it. We can click on the header and go to the um, developer tools. So they are not enabled by default. I don't remember exactly where to enable uh, developer tools. It must be some somewhere in preferences. The quickest way to do it is to go to any room and just type dev tools. I'm going to enable developer mode. And here we are. So I can click on the header, go to developer tools, and I can explore the room state. And I can see there is, for example, this state event org matrix Mjolnir shortcode. So I can see the shortcode is COC, for example. And there are not much other things at the moment. We are not going to dive into the details of what is happening to the state of a room or how Mjolnir is uh, storing the information, but just keep in mind that Mjolnir uses a matrix room to keep track of who is banned from a community or not. So let's see how to add somebody to our denial list. Uh, here again, we can use Mjolnir help or we can just use the message we have here. And I want to ban somebody. So I can see I have the common Mjolnir ban, list short code, user, room server, club, reason. So I'm going to ban a user. So I'm going to issue Mjolnir ban because I want to ban the user. I want to ban them and put them on the code of conduct list. I explicitly say I want to ban a user and then I need to say who I want to ban. So for example, heave, eve, uh, on the home server example.com. So Mjolnir, this is very verbose because uh, I purposefully did not disable the verbosity of Mjolnir in, in its configuration file. It's going to perform uh, the thing. It tells me the ban has been performed by adding a little check mark below my message. And it says it updated the member bans in that list. And I can still not see anything here. If we go to the developer tools, we can go to the room states and we can see room server ACL and policy rule user. I can see that for example, if for example, at example.com it has joined that state event and on the server ACL, I don't have anything here because it's in the policy that I have everything. But let's not spend too much time on how it technically works. So we, we can ban a user, but we could also ban a, a server as a whole. Uh, I just need to say Mjolnir ban. I can add still to the code of conduct list server, and I can ban example.com entirely. So I added a, a ban for this server entirely. You can see it can be pretty tedious to repeat the list name if it's the the one list I'm going to use all the time. So I can tell Mjolnir that the one list is the default uh, to use if I don't specify it otherwise. To do so, I can just issue, issue Mjolnir default and COC. And now I can say, for example, Mjolnir ban user. I don't need to specify the list shortcode and the user can be EV at example.com and the user has been banned. I didn't have to specify it was for the code of conduct list. Finally, if you want to subscribe to someone else's deny list, you can simply issue the common Mjolnir watch with the address of their home server. For example, there is a community effort uh, to uh, watch out for spam and to add people in, in that list. I can issue Mjolnir watch the name what the address of the community and there was an error processing my comment okay so i just ran into a, a simple issue but uh, that needs to be fixed on Mjolnir. Uh, i tried to watch uh, the community moderation effort list and my home server had an issue so i went to see the logs of Mjolnir, and basically it was not able to resolve that 
without address, uh, which should not happen because it should be able to resolve that address because it's not just a room ID. Anyway, uh, the way to walk around that is to just join this yourself uh, on the home server that has the Mjolnir account. And then you can issue the command again and it's going to join the room. Uh, so now every people who are um, on that list are going to be banned from all my rooms. Some lists are fairly safe to watch to avoid its spam. You have, for example, the matrix or issued one and the community maintained one uh, that I just use. Uh, I'm going to leave the address of those um, deny lists in, in the description. Just a note on the size of list, even if a list is impressive, uh, don't worry about it making your server tremble under the load of all the rules. Mjolnir is a lazy hammer. It will only effectively ban someone from a room if they were on a de deny list that it's watching and when they show up, not before. We're now done with tutorials on moderation, except if you want a final one on how to get the fancy reports enabled in your control room. It involves setting up a special route in your reverse proxy and enabling it in Mjolnir. So let me know in the comments if you want to be worked through it. As always, the tooling and tutorials are made possible by people and organizations supporting us. If you can afford it, please consider donating. I'm leaving a link to our donor box in the description. I see you next week, and in the meantime, take care.